Um, such a moving, uh, moving words. I'm embarrassed to, to speak about the opera in a way, but I've been asked to talk about it a little bit, and so I will. Uh, the, the opera owes its origins to something that I think no one knows about, so I'm going to tell you about it right now. Uh, the, I would say the godfather of the opera was an unknown Indian gentleman who ran a rug store in a small town on the border of Sikkim on a road called Ten Mile Road. And I took that road every morning to visit some friends at a monastery, and I was there for a week or so, and every day I said hello to Mr. Sarup, that was his name. And uh, as things happen in India sometimes, it wasn't long before we were talking and having tea together, and one day he said, I have something I want to show you. And he took me to the local movie house. He had arranged a special showing for me of a bit of film. It was in the afternoon, and this movie house probably only showed a movie about once a month anyway. And uh, he had arranged this, and I sat there. I had no idea what to, I was going to see. And what I saw was a film footage, news footage, of the Great Salt March uh, from the early 1930s. And uh, I was astonished. I had known who Gandhi was. I was 10, year old, 10 years old when he was assassinated. But I, and that was, a, it was a, a day that everyone who was alive would remember that day. But I didn't know who he was until I saw him on that film, this small, this tiny man surrounded by thousands of people. And they walked into the ocean, put their dhotis and the, their cotton cloth into the sea and took out. They were harvesting salt as a protest against the salt tax that the British Raj was imposing on the, the people of India, which was considered a, very, a great hardship on the, on, the, on the poor people of India. Uh, and what I saw was a man of such extraordinary uh, character. Uh, the, uh, his energy was electrifying, even after all those years in this tiny, rickety piece of film. Uh, it came through to me. Uh, the, the, the stamina of his morality, uh, the courage of his ideas. And I was on fire after that. I went back to New Delhi. This was 1969, 40 years ago. And I went to the Gandhi Peace Foundation. I found books. I would urge you, if you want to know about Gandhi, some of his best writing is his, is his own autobiography. And he talks about these things. And uh, I visited India a number of times after that. I, after that, I went to visit his ashrams. And, Ahmedabad and Wargram near Hyderabad. I met people that had walked with him because it wasn't that long before that those people were marching with him. Vino Bhava, who had taken up the marches after he passed away, after Gandhi was gone. I met him as well. And uh, I wasn't really preparing to write an opera. I was just preparing something, and I didn't know what it would be. And uh, in 1978, I was invited to do an opera, and I said, yes, yes. Uh, it was the Netherlands opera. I would like to do an opera about Gandhi. Gandhi in South Africa. The years from 1893 to 1914 where the techniques and the tools of, of, uh, of uh, social transformation through nonviolence were developed. All the tools that became the, the language of modern politics happened there. Uh, he started a newspaper. He did marches. He, they burned their registration cards. Anything that you, filled the jails, anything that you can think of, Gandhi did it then. He came back to India in 1914. He was a famous man because Indian opinion, his newspaper, had been spread around the world. It wasn't actually written for local consumption, uh, but it was sent to, 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 uh, to England. It was sent to India. It was sent to the United States. Um, he was in touch also with, uh, uh, with Tolstoy. He was a friend of Tagore's. And he didn't uh, know King as far as I know, but King became his legacy. Uh, so that became the opera. Uh, 